Hey everybody, this is Kasu and I am on holiday. Uh, hence why I will not be streaming this entire week. However, fret not, this week I'll be releasing a video every day until I come back. And the videos I'll be releasing is this, Kenga Mod. So what is Kenga Mods? So Kenga Mod is not a singular mod, it's a bunch of mods uh, that work together to give Ark a much more immersive and much more primitive and medieval uh, feeling to it. So why I chose Kenga Mod is because I felt that Kenga Mod has... Like the Discord is very helpful in teaching new players. However, there isn't really a video uh, or tutorial video to show how it works. Hence why I decided to put it on myself to make tutorial videos for them. And for the first of the tutorial, it will be the blacksmith mod. And without further ado, let's begin. So you might be wondering to yourself, how do I begin the blacksmith mod? Well, you must first find this particular metal ingot, or rather metal node. And this particular metal node is uh, randomly spawned. So there's no set position or set place where this uh, metal node is spawned. From what the Discord or the wiki says, it's said that uh, this node will spawn whenever a Dilphosaur or a Parasaur spawns. So, and there's just a chance for them to spawn. So once you get your stone pickaxe and you ha start harvesting it, you will get four items. Clay, stone, impure metal ore and metal ore. Two of which are much more uh, new to the mod itself, or rather much more new to the game. And there is a second type of metal ore, which uh, gives pure metal ore and impure metal ore and stone without the clay. So it doesn't cut out your inventory as much. And the clay is here, is because the clay is actually a very important part of the mod. Hence, uh, allowing it to be used in any map, including ones that does not have uh, sand, cactus or clay. So, let's start out with all of the basic structures. This is the primitive coal burner. It is your most important structure. Why? Because it is used to make coal. However, this primitive coal burner takes a really long time to make one single coal. So I highly suggest to quickly get this uh, up and use it, or rather fill it up and start it ASAP so that you can at least get a sum of coal by the time you come back from adventuring. So after making the primitive coal bench, the next thing you need to make is the Primitive Blacksmith Workbench. In the Primitive Blacksmith Workbench, you have access to a bunch of other items or other structures that is needed. For example, this Stone Anvil and this Sharpening Stone. For the Bloomery, I'll get to it later. So in the Workbench, uh, you'll notice that there are also a bunch of other items like for example, the Primitive Forge and also the Bellow. This is the this is where it starts getting a little bit confusing however if you do have uh, some knowledge of actual blacksmithing you'll be fine because it follows uh, the actual blacksmithing to quite a degree so uh, what i mean let me explain so the next step is to make this primitive forge once you make the primitive forge and you place it down uh, you require the bellow this bellow is not part of the primitive forge as you can see i can just pick it up and if I want to put it down, I just put it. Uh, I can need to put it down again. This primitive forge cannot work without the bellow, as I'm going to show you now. So I have already placed a bunch of coal in here, and I'm going to take out this ingot mold. And I, and to make the weak, or hot weak metal ingot, those are two describing adjectives on one single item. You have to have the normal metal and the metal ore. And once you use the bellow, you have to light the fire ASAP. And you have to keep using the bellow to basically keep up the fire so that you have more time to uh, use, or rather more time to uh, play around or and to make the hot weak metal ingot. So, as you can see, I'm trying to make the weak, hot weak metal ingot, but they said I need an ingot mold. This is why uh, this the ingot mold comes in. The ingot mold is crafted inside the blacksmith uh, workbench itself. And uh, there's also another particular mode called the Hammerhead mode, and this is also equally important, and I'll show you why now. So, in the once you have your ingot mode, you just pop it in, uh, make sure that your in your charcoal is burning, and you can just craft as many ingot hot metal ingots you want. 
to speed up the process, I'll just do this. Okay, now that you have crafted a bunch of hot weak metal ingot, you might think that, okay, so uh, I can now immediately just pop it into the anvil and try to hammer it out into any shape I want, correct? Not so fast, because if you try to do that uh, without this hammer, they will ask you to require a hammer to craft. So, you have to take this hot metal ingot, put it back inside uh, this forge, craft yourself a hammer head. And as I, showed, as I told you just now, you need a mold for it. So once you put the mold inside, craft it, pick up your mold, put it here inside the primitive workbench. Craft a wooden handle for yourself and finally you can craft this blacksmith hammer. And once you have crafted this blacksmith hammer, you can put it inside the anvil to finally able to mold hot metal ingots to whichever item or whichever head you like. Axe head, pickaxe head, whichever one. So uh, before I continue on how on making all of these items, you realize why is there a spoil timer on a metal ingot of all things? Well, so this spoil timer is to show after once this timer reaches to zero, it will turn into this weak metal ingot itself. And in order to turn this back into the hot metal, uh, hot metal ingot or hot variant, you have to throw it back into the forge and just you know heal it up again. And once to heal up, you can put it back down and mold it into whatever shape you want. So now that I have this metal ingot here, I'm going to craft a weak hatchet head. And once you craft the hatchet head, you can put it inside this particular, uh, this workbench itself. Craft yourself another wooden handle. And finally, craft your weak metal hatchet. And you might think to yourself, oh, okay, so once I craft my weak metal hatchet, uh, I'm good to go, right? I can just start harvesting it, correct? Not quite yet. Once I pick up this weak metal ha uh, hatchet, you can realize this particular uh, metal pick is has a durability bar and stuff like that. However, this metal hatchet has the word blunt and I can't equip it at all. Why is that? Well, that is because you have to put it in the sharpening stone first. So once you pick up your metal hatchet or whatever metal items you have, Put it uh, uh, in the sharpening stone, put in some cutting fluid, and then you can sharpen your metal hatchet into the a uh, workable uh, tool. So, how do you get this cutting fluid? Well, cutting fluid is actually craftable by putting by make, with some oil and silica pearl. And uh, the advanced version of it is used to basically sharpen the more advanced items. For example, the forged metal tools and the enriched metal tools. And this requires oil, silica pearl, and organic polymer. Now, now that we have our weak metal tool, you can finally start using it as how a tool should be able to should be used, either cutting down stone or cutting down trees. But Here's one part of the mod which is more intricate in design. In this case, I have a broken uh, enriched metal hatchet and a blunt metal hatchet. So I'm going to take uh, both of these out along with this whetstone. So as uh, previously shown, if I throw this metal hatchet inside and I sharpen it, I get this, the primitive uh, or rather the enriched metal hatchet. And now I'm going to show this. So, once you, well, if you mouse over the uh, metal hatchet itself, you realize it not only has a durability uh, icon, it also has an effectiveness icon. Why is that? Well, to show you how it works, this here is a broken uh, metal hatchet. I'm going to fix it with a enriched metal repair kit, which is used to uh, repair any enriched items. And now, oh, and now this particular hatchet has been fixed. But let's compare the two, shall we? So, as shown in my tool here, I have a enriched metal hatchet that I just fixed and a 
enriched metal hatchet that I just sharpened or created. So with this particular one, uh, with an effectiveness of 39%, even though it's just fixed, I get around 30 plus wood per hit. If I switch towards the uh, newly sharpened one, I get 80 plus. Yes, so this mod actually adds in sharpness into the game. So you might wonder yourself, okay, so once I repair it, uh, I have to also sharpen it. But how do I sharpen it? This is where this particular item comes in, the whetstone. This whetstone, or rather this pocket whetstone, you can just drag it over to the item you want. As you can see, it's now at an effectiveness of 39.9%. Once I use it, it will go up all the way to 100%. And despite uh, the enriched metal hatchet having 110% but now it's 109.8%, uh, unfortunately this only can reach until 100% with the uh, whetstone itself. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, okay, so now that I have uh, created my basic uh, weak tools, I want to advance further. I want to make metal tools and enriched metal tools. How do I do that? Well, you have to you make this blacksmith workbench. The blacksmith workbench can be made by using, can be created in your inventory, uh, but it requires metal nails and metal strip, which is created using the stone anvil over here and over here. And once you created the blacksmith workbench uh, and you open it, it will show you a entire plethora of new items, new structures, and new molds. And it might be a bit confusing at times, but don't worry, it is fairly uh, simple once you get the hang of it. So with this blacksmith workbench, you can create the advanced bellows, the advanced forge, and the advanced, or rather the actual blacksmith anvil itself. And also you can create the sharpening wheels to sharpen all of the um, enriched weapons, and also the big weapons. And at this point of time, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this is very, very complicated. Uh, don't worry, uh, I, once you get used to, again, once you get used to it, it will be fairly easy because all these steps are very logical uh, in if you think about it. But uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I will put down the steps on the screen uh, now and I'll also explain to you what the steps are. So for the first step, it is to take your metal and heat up the metal. Once your metal is heated up, in a molten state or rather the soft state bring it over to the anvil and then you can hammer it into uh, whatever shape you want once it's hammered into whatever shape you want bring the tool or weapon yourself back to the blacksmith workbench to fit it with a handle once it, the handle is fitted in you, uh, it is blunt so you just need to sharpen it and once it is sharpened it is good to go that is as simple as i can explain it hopefully it helps and we're now with the advanced forge you can make any other items you want. You can make the hot obsidian enriched metal ingot. You can make the hot forged metal ingot uh, with all the items there. And you might be thinking, oh, so carbon power powder, how do you get it? Well, carbon powder is made here too. So all it's very all the items are actually made with the mods uh, crafting station itself. And the blacksmith anvil can be used to mold the metal into any shape you want, any particular or any uh, items you want including armors and stuff like that i'll now I'll go through this particular item the bloomery so what is the bloomery the bloomery is basically to convert impure metal ore into metal ore so how does it work well you need to put a bunch of coal inside and i will say this first there is, there is a slightly better way to get uh, pure metal ores. And the bloomery is a rather wasteful way to get your metal ores. But I'll still show how it works. So first up, light it up on fire. And it will start slowly turning uh, this particular impure metal ore into metal bloom. Once it is made into metal bloom, bring it over to the anvil to hammer it out so this work metal uh, the metal bloom will become worked metal bloom once it becomes worked metal bloom put it back inside the uh put it back inside the bloomery itself 
and it and then finally it will slowly turn into metal ore and in the process as you can tell just how it was 57 coal now it just reduced down to 49 coal and and so basically to show you this will show you that this particular method is very wasteful on your coal which is very difficult to make as you can tell from the start of the the uh, mod showcase it has not created much coal but don't worry if you want to create more coal that uh once you created the blacksmith workbench you can create this particular one the advanced coal burner which uh it's it's able to make more coal in more bulk and if i'm not wrong it's slightly faster now imagine yourself like already having like advanced quite far inside the mod and you're thinking to yourself i'm struggling to find metal ores i'm struggling to find the impure metal ore i'm struggling to find the metal ores and everything like everything because these creatures are not spawning them how do i get more metal ore this is where this hawking machine comes in so this hawking machine is also your source of gravel as shown here but how do you operate it well to start out you have to create this stamp mill piston stem mill piston is created in this the blacksmith workbench as i show here yep once you created the stem mill piston uh you have to fit it up with uh four of it so it will take a bit of time but eventually this is very worth it once you fit it up with the four pistons uh you can just hop it to the back here as you can see when i hop it to the back here it says stone hopper once I open it up, I just need to put in either stone, which I'm just gonna just throw it all the way in, or I can put in the impure metal ingot, which also uh, is described there. Crushing this rock in a stem mill can extract metal from it. But this is on the case that you cannot find any metal, uh, impure metal, also. If you put in stone, uh, you just put in stone, it will ultimately turn into gravel and sometimes uh, metal ore to speed up the process let me just as you can tell uh the metal ore is not very common however it does exist so if you want to you can just harvest a lot of stone throw it inside and make however much you want now uh, now that i've shown you all of the uh mechanics of the mod itself now i'll show you how or rather what items you can create so these are uh, this is a flag armor uh, the normal standard flag armor which can be created uh, via the mod itself and this is the uh, scorched earth skin for the mental core armor but the best part is that this is not a skin this is an actual armor and once i open up this particular inventory you realize oh what the armor is not a fixed number it's not 100 yes so when you uh, create the armor itself it actually will give you a much more better version of the uh, original armor this includes uh, the mental core armor too so you can finally wear this armor and walk around and people will not think oh he's maybe wearing leather armor underneath but it's actually a useful and suitable armor also you can create weapons so the weapons are a spear a glaive a mace a pike and a sword so this particular spear can be thrown as shown but i'm going to show you how much damage it will do it does you know that amount of damage the glaive is works as a spear Unfortunately, this mod doesn't really give it a custom swing attack. But with the glaive, let's hit this guy. And yeah, it just deals a damage similar to a spear. Now, let's pick up the mace and swing at this particular guy. And yes, you can tell the mace is just a better version of the primitive club. As it will doesn't do much damage, but it does give a lot of topper. So any guy who ups his melee damage will fucking love this weapon next up is the normal pike 
which will do what a pike does as shown and lastly is this sword which is the highest damage because it's a fucking sword and lastly what is a blacksmith or rather what is a immersive mod without decorations so this is an ingot shelf where you can put in a bunch of ingots let me just pick out a few which i can't find hold on a second there we go and you can just put this in uh put the ingot inside your ingot uh shelf to keep it and next up is the spear rack which you can be used to put in your spears and unfortunately you only put in you only can put in a spear what the fuck next up is the weapon rack which you can put in all your weapons uh unfortunately for some reason only the pack is shown uh the glaive and the mace is not shown nor is the sword so yeah and yeah that's about it that is the end of the blacksmith kanga mod if you guys enjoyed this video uh do like and subscribe and hopefully this tutorial video is able to help any other uh, players that want to play kanga mod but is too like daunting of a task to uh, learn and hopefully this video is able to help you out and don't worry, uh, tomorrow I'll be back with a yet another Kenka mod uh, for you guys to see and also learn from. And with that being said, this has been Kasu and I hope to see you guys in the next video or stream. Bye!